Hi and yes welcome to yet another tutorial stroke walkthrough for PBR Painter. Uh, a little bit more depth today, I've made this model, it took me about an hour or so to make uh, and it just hopefully goes into a little bit more depth and detail for PBR Painter covering some uh, bump maps, indents, bump, map, bump maps, ID uh, masking where I've got three ID masks here for the feet, the body and the glass sections here uh, I'm primarily using procedurally created PBR textures. I'm using one ready-made PBR texture for Rust, but everything else is procedurally created. So uh, it gives a fairly good result. I think I'm quite pleased with the results, the final result. So without further ado, let's get started. So here's the model we're going to use today. It's a quite a simple model and if I just tab into edit mode you'll see really it's just a cylinder with some a little bit of detail added uh, just enough to give it some cavities and uh, ed nice edges uh, same for the the legs what I've done actually I've got a uh, one main armature running through here and these are just at the moment they're just instances uh, but once it's all done I'll just copy and copy these this one if I just turn the instances off you'll see copy this one leg here and uh, duplicate it around uh, so a couple of things to mention here let's just look at it this particular leg model and uh, what I've done on the edges here is I've given a crease and a bevel weight uh, depending on what the object is uh, just less uh, to a lesser or greater degree and those modifiers are basically um, to be used after the bevel modifier, especially to be used after. I find that when we're when I'm making the edge masks, the cavities and the uh, edge wear masks, the sharper this is here, uh, the better the actual kind of coverage of the white against the black is. So I would recommend you well not a recommendation I would say it's a, it's a, it's a must uh, don't uh, have the bevels activated until you've finished the object you can turn them on every now and again just um, it doesn't actually make a difference when you're doing the masks uh, believe it or not so there's our model we're going to be working with today and we're also going to be working with ID maps as opposed to surface names at the moment I have uh, five material names for the top and two for the bottom here for the the legs, I find the right one. Huh. So I've got legs and feet for that one, and these five versions here. And so I'm going to create a cavity map for use later on in, in PBR Painter, uh, and it's really useful as so you will see in time. So to do that, let's start. I've already got an image texture ready to go here. We're going to create a new blank image call this ID capsule map for want of anything else let's make it 4k don't know if it really needs to be that big but better to be safe than sorry and so once we've got that one there we copy that into all our other material places here and once they're done uh, making sure that it's selected in each one it should be because we just pasted it there we go to the bake options change it from combined to diffuse where are you diffuse there and we just want the color and we just right now ready to go click bake and here we have our mask our ID mask and so once that's there don't forget to save it save as and I'll actually just make a textures folder ID capsule ma map okay and so that's that one done and then we'll move on to the legs the feet same again we'll texture image texture new ID ID legs map okay 
copy that to the next version back into the baker still on diffuse color click bake and there's our ID map for our legs so once again don't forget to save that and then we're done uh, so now before we go on to the next section what we need to do is just combine all these so let's make a new surface call this capsule 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 got how to spell capsule pbr p master and then tab into edit mode a select all and assign and then once again with the legs and we'll do the same sort of thing the legs pbr p master tab into edit mode select all assign and then we're done now, now we're ready to paint uh, you can actually just to finish off just click on the arrow down here and remove unused slots just to make life a lot cleaner for you and we'll save this now as number two and we'll move on to PBR painter so let's start by taking our main capsule into texture paint tab we can see it here and actually you need to be on the um, what would you call it it's viewport shading tab or option whatever you'd like to call it uh, let's move this let's get a little bit more screen space and we start off by pressing the set material for PBR painter okay and before we do anything what we're going to do is actually change our background here uh, to a kind of metallic uh, undercoat so this is basically what's going to be seen uh, when various uh, parts of the textures we're going to create kind of like wear away so we want quite a nice kind of um, sh like smooth metal look like with no it, no defects kind of to, sp to speak of so let's to do that we go into our PBR layers here and we'll create something a bit darker we'll make it metallic and bring the roughness down just a tad something like that I think that looks quite nice we might um, might go up a little bit let's just take the color down yep I think that'll do and so we'll start with our first layer which is going to be a old kind of rusty uh, metal, um, metal decayed layer uh, which we're going to put on the top of the whole of this surface to start off with so let's start by making a new layer and we'll call this capsule metal base and it's going to be a procedural layer so I'm going to start off with the base color I think um, if we set the color to start off with uh, but what we do need to do is we need to hide this kind of metal look at the moment which is coming through so the best way to do that is if we turn all these on and we'll do roughness just do uh, roughness up to zero and we haven't got normal on the other one anyway so we can leave that and we fill it with this layer and we should just get plain white which is what we've got so let's start with making this base color procedural and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start changing these parameters here and I'm just going to rush through them so um, rather than talk you through them it's quite which is quite um, uh, exhaustive to you to watch as well uh, and got a lot of tweaking going on I'm just going to kind of whiz through it
Okay, so there's our actual colour. I might play with that again a little bit later, but I need to see it with the various metallic options as well, the metallic and roughness, <coughs> and the normal for that matter. So we'll do the same with metallic. So now we'll copy this particular procedural to the roughness. And you can see we're starting to get uh, kind of a nice mix of rough and smooth on here. It's not quite right at the moment. We basically don't want it shiny at all for this particular texture, particular uh, roughness. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. And just to finish, we'll do the same with the normal. And we just need to take the opacity way, way down. just a feel really for it as opposed to anything else okay and so there we have our base metal I think that's okay let's see a little bit more of the grey I'm just going to tweak these colours a tiny bit see a little bit more of the actual metal texture coming through okay I think that will do so there's our first layer done so now we've got the color what I want to do is just on the edges here or well the edges all over really is just to see some edge wear so as it wears as the edges catch over time uh, the um, the they the bits that stay shiny as it were because they're always always been kind of roughed roughed out rubbed down uh, so to do that we let's just hide some of these give me a bit more room to do that we need to create a mask so we go to layer masks and we go add new and we're going to use the we're going to try a different a couple of different options we're going to start with the ambient occlusion and for this of course you need to be in cycles so we click to cycles mode and also I like to preview mask stack on mesh and because we're working the other way around it doesn't matter right now when we make the mask but ultimately we want the black to be on the edge and not the white and the white to be in the middle so we have to flip the mask but uh, for the time being let's just play with some of these settings once again I'm going to play with these until I'm kind of happy with it and so I'm going to sort of fast forward through this little, this little bit Okay, so now we're going to bake that mask. This, is, this isn't complete, by the way. So what I'm going to do now, although it's pretty, pretty good, it's pretty close to what I want. Uh, some of the um, whites I don't want on the edges here, so I'm going to try and create another mask just to hide some of the cavities, and hopefully an ambient occlusion mask will do that. But before I do that, I need to bake that mask down. So I'm actually going to leave it, everything at 4K today because uh, it can start getting quite slow if I have too high the resolution on these some of these masks uh, and my computer is not being the best does start to slow down a little bit so let's call this capsule edge or mask one 4k okay so here's our first baked mask now that is an actual image map so you can actually find that in the actual images now so what do we call it capsule edge one 
so capsule H1 mask 4k so there it is so if you did need to paint on it now you could quite happily paint it or ex export it and take it into uh, an, uh, an external program like a program like Photoshop or GIMP then that's another option for you it's, they're all self-contained within the blend file at the moment so as long as you save the blend file uh, you should be fine uh, but it's not quite right so I've still got some of this white showing through where I don't want it there and a little bit there which I don't want as well so I'm going to create another mask and hopefully use the second mask just to hide some of the bits I don't want here and that is another ambient occlusion mask so we need cycles for that so we pop back to cycles I'm just going to turn that one off for a moment and as you can see this really without activating the inside AO uh, just uh, just affects the cavities themselves it's a bit high again so let's drop it down we can always squeeze the whites later but I prefer to have more of this kind of gradient color initially anyway and then we can always squeeze it once it's baked so I'm just going to try that without messing around anymore I'm just going to bake that one down make sure that when you bake these you notice when you click on it it says merge visible masks if you've got them both visible it will merge them both into one uh, so make sure you hide this one because we want to keep that as it is for the time being so merge visible masks we call this capsule edge mask in fact we call this capsule AO might be able to use this one again later okay and there's our baked mask um, it's n never always perfect and you see that uh, it's kind of giving me this kind of crisscross pattern as well but that uh, is easily resolved just by uh, bringing the black up whoops on the wrong one bringing the black up just squeezing it a little bit so we're left with this quite nice inside edge but what I want to do is just lift that on top of the previous mask let's go back to EV and this one here I'm literally going to use to mask this one so just in those areas there so let's have a look at it on its own let's squeeze those right down so just want those little bits in the crevices in fact I'll swap those around so the black is there That should be perfect and then we free preview this on the mask now and turn this to multiply blend factor up to one and so we've actually just hidden those bits which I didn't want the edge mask to be on uh, it's a little bit there but we can live with that it's not even going to be noticeable later on but that's perfect so now from these two I'm going to create one mask and now I can leave them both selected 4k and we'll call this capsule edge mask 2 okay and so there's our edge mask so now uh, what I said earlier was I want this to be black and this to be white uh, the way we've got it at the moment uh, the white basically will show through to the um, sorry the black will show through to what's below this layer which actually is the PPR layers and uh, we don't want that so we need to swap, swap those around uh, it never quite swaps around quite how I like it to this always needs to kind of squeeze it a lot more to get to get one what I want but even so I think we're pretty good and now let's have a look at this on the actual model and there we can see our edge mask probably overdone it a little bit and so it's just showing through that nice kind of clean metal on the edges not quite so good here though might just have to revisit that again but I think that's not bad for what I want for now yep that'll do
Okay, so there's our first layer done. And I think all in all it looks quite good. So let's move on to our second layer. And for this second layer, we're going to create a color, like a painted top to this section here. So we'll start by creating a new layer. Call this capsule paint. Whoops. Capsule paint. And the first thing we do once again is just to fill it. So we're covering the whole thing here. We've got nothing nothing actually selected at the moment, so you won't see it, but as soon as I click one, base colour, and we'll just make this um pretty much red. Maybe not quite as red. Fill it again. So now you see what uh, where we're at. So I didn't want I don't want the whole thing to be red. So now I get to use my ID map. So we click on the ID map option here, which gives us a few more options. So uh, we're looking for that actual ID map we made earlier. Kind of load it. I know that mine's here. And if you view ID map on mesh you get to pick here which color you want to use to mask and so with the picker tool just going to click that one turn this off and now as you can see it's just the actual top that we're masking and it's, uh, it's a really useful tool to have so we've got our color so we need to work on our metallic and for metallic I think we'll just I know you generally it's either one or the other. I often wonder why they do have a slider here, but I actually do use uh, a bit of metallic sort of in paint. I guess you can have that half and halfness. I'm probably talking rubbish. And the roughness, I think we'll do a procedural. takes a little while to refresh sometimes there we go and I don't mind what we had underneath so let's this is what we had underneath and I just want a little bit of this just to add a little bit of difference between what we had before and what we've got now that's good and then let's close a few of these it starts getting quite busy and so for normal actually for normal we're going to create a mask uh, so I'll link it to the mask right now but um, we're not going to see anything because I haven't actually created a mask yet so now the next step is to create a new mask so for this mask I what I what, I'm, what I want is really just to create some sort of edge chippingness to this so the paint looks more like a chipped paint uh, especially around here possibly around the top as well near the edges where it's starting to come away uh, so we'll do that with a combination of masks and we'll start by once again creating a similar sort of mask to what we had before with the ambient occlusion mask bear in mind it's just affecting the red preview mask stack on mesh so I think something like that would be absolutely fine for what we need so basically I'm going to get a little bit of uh, edge chipping here and some edge where edge here where the paint's starting to come away from the, the sides turn that off So, so so I kind of want a combination of that and that so I think I'll do two maps so let's start, start off with this one and let's bake this one and we'll call this chipped edge A01 temp okay 
do there's the first one let's just hide that for a moment stay in cycles and create another one ambient occlusion that looks about right so we'll bake that one down too so now I've got the two masks and I've got the first one and the second one combined so there would be the, the uh, actually that's the second one I've done and the first one here so if we go somewhere between the two where it was 0.5 uh, you can see we've kind of got a bit of both uh, we just need to work on them to get rid of all this yuckiness in the middle so let's just do one at a time actually so there's that one and that's that one and let's make it a little bit brighter That, that would do, that's pretty good. So let's bake that down and call that AO chipped edge AO master. Okay, so we just want to combine that now with a procedural mask um, and just to try and create this sort of chipped paint effect. And you could either do that with a kind of noise procedural or possibly. Uh, there is one actually that um, that Will did with the cracked scale. I'm just going to see if I can remember it. It was okay. Just bear with me while I have a little mess around here. I'm just going to whiz through this. So what we've got, it's got we've got a really nice looking uh, chipped texture, but it's inverted. I want to uh, swap it. Um, so let's uh, should be easy enough. Just swap the main, and because I had that normal map fixed to link to mask, I think it's just a bit overkill. Just need it just to be a little bit like a lot less actually. It's just a subtle feeling of an edge to the paint. But I think that looks pretty good. Actually, I'm quite pleased with that. So I'm going to go with that for now. And rather than have three masks here, because um, there is a limit to how many how many textures I can have on the EV. I'm not sure if it includes these masks, but I can't see any reason why not. Why it shouldn't? So I'm going to bake these masks down into one. Just make sure I'm completely happy with with it. I think it's nice. It's giving me like a bit of chip paint look around the edges. Bit of chip paint here where it's obviously taken a few knocks. Whoops. Yep, that's good. Let's go with that. So let's bake that mask and we'll call this chipped edge chipped edge paint master okay and there we go so there's our chip paint 
So for the next layer, we actually will do this bottom bit here uh, and the um, corresponding bits that I left on the ID map with it. So let's make a new layer and just call this uh, capsule base. Capsule base. I'm sure, I've already got that. Capsule metal basing. So this is the actual base, and we'll do once again a procedural. I'll try and avoid for this particular one using PBR textures that have already been created, just because Eevee tends to struggle if I get too many textures on there. Uh, so once again, let's start with our base color. Let's make that procedural before we do anything else. Need to just fill that. And there we can see our procedural is all over at the moment, which is fine uh, for now. But uh, let's just preview this on the mesh. It's a lot easier to see what we're doing. Okay, so I just want a bit of light and dark really to it. At this point, actually, I'm going to activate the ID map. View ID map on mesh. Select the color that I want. Turn off the ID map. And there we can see we're just working with this bottom layer now. So we've done the base color. So let's do the metallic. And once again we'll do a we'll do a procedural. something like that would be okay yep starting to get there it's quite nice roughness we'll do a slightly different procedural for roughness we'll do the musgrave and preview that on the mesh Okay, I think that would do. Yep, there we go. That's the kind of look. And I think lastly, we'll just do a normal procedural. In fact, I'll copy the Musgrave texture I have here to the normal. And we just want a tiny bit of this. Yep, I think that'll do. Okay, so there's our paint done. So next, we have to kind of do the same as we did with this one. And it's uh, going to just chip off some of this here to see the uh, <coughs> metal beneath. So let's go to our masks. Add new mask. We'll go image texture. And we should be able to use the mask we used before for the chipped paint chipped edge paint master I think that's what we called it just preview that on the mesh yep that I think that will do that will work quite well I think let's well let's have a look shall we yeah it's working well for this it's not really doing what I want it to. Okay, so it's not really doing what I want it to. So I'm going to add another mask and hopefully we, with a combination we can um, make this work so that we get a better, kind of more even paint. So just bear with me as I have a play around. I remembered that I had 
an ambient occlusion mask which I'd also made for this particular one so the combination of the two gave me pretty much what I wanted which was just essentially a little bit of uh, chipping away of the paints on the outside here and I think if we actually do that normal if we do the linked mask again then we'll start to get some of this edgeness and I think that's that's quite nice just a little bit of paint left on the sides and the tops starting to look a little bit older okay before we go on to the next layer I just want to revisit the capsule paint layer and add a little bit of um, of a sort of blemishing to the actual redness so it's, it's very red at the moment and so to do that we're going to change it to procedural and we'll make them both red actually yeah. I quite like that and as it is it's probably a bit overkill so Okay, I prefer that. It's a little bit less uh, bright and a bit more grunge-like, which is the look I'm going for. So, talking of grunge, this is next in our list. So, we've got quite a nice clean edges and uh, so on and so forth. So, what I'd like to do is add some grunge. In fact, more of a kind of rust-like rust grunge to this. Uh, so. I could use a procedural texture here but just for time I'm actually going to add a rust texture uh, so I'll just call this rust grunge and for this one I'm actually going to add uh, an actual rust PBR and I think if I go looking for one this one will do the job got to say that mostly the PBR textures that you import look fantastic and will save you an awful lot of time one of the reasons I don't use them so or haven't used them a lot is because uh, you have four textures per channel as it were and you're only allowed I think it's 24 textures uh, for EV before per, um, per material before it maxes out and then uh, turns this kind of like strange kind of pinky blue color I remember what the color is, but uh, once you get, once you reach that limit, um, you then either have to go to cycles and uh, work in cycles, which is generally a bit slower, and uh, or flatten some of the maps down, which means you can't ever go back and make any changes like I just did to the red then, for example. So let's fill this with rust, and you see that looks pretty good. That that as it is. I like that, it's very rusty. Uh, trying to create this sort of texture with uh, procedurals is, or in here especially, is uh, very, very difficult. You probably could achieve it in the uh, node editor, the better material editor. But anyway, that's what we've got. Let's change the texture mapping so that it's a lot more detailed. okay so let's create our grunge mask so we just want to see this just in the corners and edges so a simple preset that exists that well has made and that is the grunge preset here it does a fairly good job once again we need to go to cycles to see this and preview that mask stack on the mesh and that looks pretty good 
so we'll go with that. And there's our map plate. <coughs> so we can now turn the preview mask stack on mesh and we should see our rust come through. Wait for the shaders to compile. And let's have a look. Okay, I think we need to squeeze the mask a bit more. <coughs> Okay, there it's looking quite nice. Uh, also, in the crevices here and around here, we're getting this quite nice rust look. Uh, the um, final thing to do, of course, is to change the normal to increase the strength. There we go. And there we go, we've got quite a nice uh, looking rust and that's probably a bit overkill on the strength here let's halve that and I'd like to make it darker as well so it's kind of like a dirty rust uh, so this easiest way to do that is to just adjust the curves on the actual image itself something like that looks pretty good and this is coming together quite nicely now so our next layer is going to be a bump layer where we create some insets here using the kind of normal the way that the normal here uh, which is way too strong still actually is linked to the mask we're going to do the same thing but rather than have like a fractal noise here we're going to actually have quite some quite bold black colors uh, well, dark, uh, bold colours anyway to, to create our mask. I'm just going to show you how it, that actually works. So let's create our new layer and call this bump in. And we're only going to use the normal for now and we'll link it to the mask. And just turn it off for a second. Add new mask, image texture, create new. Let's call this bump in map okay and if we just preview that map on the mask on the mesh you'll see it's selected uh, it's black completely black that's the way that defaults all masks come in but we actually want it to be white uh, let me just fill that layer before I do anything else let's turn that off so I've created the layer make sure I fill it so it's active and now oh whoops of course I need to fill it, I need to make it white first. So making sure that my base color is white. I actually don't need it on, Just it just has to be white. So then I fill it, so I'm not gray. What am I doing? My base color. Oh, that's because I've gone from, it's, it's a different palette actually from the paintbrush to the fill tool. So, uh, and it's grayscale, so that's why even though it's orange here, it needs to be Completely, uh, completely white. Let's try that again. So it's completely white uh, on my map. Now, when I go to paint, let's turn that off and go back to paintbrush. As I paint here, you'll see I get a really nice indent uh, in. So I'm doing the opposite of what you would normally do to create that kind of look. Uh, but rather than use my paintbrush, let me undo that. So I'm going to use a going to use a stencil, a brush texture. And I've got one loaded here, and it's something I made in Photoshop. Just they're just literally black lines, curved lines with blurred, uh, nice curved edge. And I just go into go into orthographic mode. Uh, for those of you who don't know how to move this, right mouse button to move it, shift and right mouse button to scale it, and control to rotate it, and just to reset it. You've got your angles here. You can actually do all that. Here as well, so 
Okay, so let's set this up. I'd like it to go somewhere where it's going to make some sense. So in my orthographical view, just make sure that everything's level. And we'll go about here and start painting. Make sure I've got it all. Looks pretty good. Just a little bit there missing. And then we'll move around. Making sure to keep our objects level. So just to reiterate, I'm actually erasing, I'm using the eraser here to erase the white that I painted on top. For some reason it works better than painting black. Uh, when it paints black for some reason it doesn't do quite as good a job. Don't ask me why, it just doesn't. It's probably something I'm doing, it normally is. Almost there. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's just turn that brush texture off now, come out of orthographic mode. And you can see we've got this uh, indents here, looking a little bit rough, but we should be able to, with a little bit of tweaking, uh, fix this and fix these just by putting in the whites a little bit. There we go, Look, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Already. So that's not quite nice and clean now. And so what I'd really like, you know, I missed a bit there, but I'm just going to leave it. What I'd really like is for these bits in here to be a little bit darker. Uh, but if I link to the mask now with the just the colour, you'll see that's, oh, I don't even have to link to the mask, I've already got the mask there. Uh, you'll see that the colours on the wrong side, I like the black to be on the inside. Uh, so a workaround I found is to swap these over. So on my mask I'm actually swapping the colours over. So now these are going out, which is what they would normally have done if I'd have left it white and painted it black. No, sorry, left it black and painted it white. Um, but what we're going to do now is do the opposite with the normal. So here in my colour ramp I'll just swap these over so that it goes back in and you can see straight away that now I've got that quite nice black texture. I don't want it all there. So while we're here we could just create a little bit more detail by using the same process we've just done. So that's what I think we'll do. So on our brush settings, we'll go back to brush texture and we'll change the mask, the, the um, texture we're using, to one I've got here called line. And it's the same principle again. We go back to our layer. Everything's set for us, so I shouldn't have to change anything. Just paint on here. again paint yeah turn preview selected mask off and go back to and I'm just going to put a sort of dividing line so they look it almost looks like a panel here something like that. Let's see what that looks like. That's perfect. That's just what I wanted. So let's do the same here. Now I've just come across something which is worth reiterating, worth talking about here, is that if I paint once I get uh, it's uh, accumulative, if I paint again I get an even deeper one and again an even deeper one which 
is good if you want that but uh, I don't <laughs> so I need to make sure I get it all done in one go there you go that'll do and it gives us this nice sort of panelled look which is a cheap way of modelling very cheap way of modelling so let's turn that off and I think that'll do for bump I'll tell you what you know what let's, let's just play around for just a little bit longer uh, let's go back to brush texture and I made a few other images let's try okay so let's see let's pop this And I think that will do for our insets. Okay, so let's leave it there for now. And let's move on to the next layer. Let's create some idents on here. So, and so once again, we're going to be doing some more painting but not of normals this time or just of a normal a uh, decal on here so let's just call this decal and let's turn on let's fill it to start off with and let's turn on base color and let's go for a, let's go for a kind of yellow which is just Let's just make let's just go for a white. <laughs> and let's fill it again now we've done that. So it's all white, but now we just need to mask where we're going to put our texture. Now I could you could actually paint on here, um, but the the layer when you make it you'd have to make it a slightly higher resolution image uh, so we'll just use the image texture for now it's just pretty much the same deal and let's make a new texture new ma mask let's call this decal obviously got a decal already somewhere and brush settings sure um, paint as usual got the wrong one let's try again brush texture there we go and over to our mask make sure paint on mask is on turn off previous selected mask so I can see where I am up to orthogonal view and let's let's put it let's put it around here Nice big fat PBR painter. Okay, so I've still got it on erase, so I need to have it on paint. Okay, that's pretty good. And it's very white at the moment so what we need is to bring it right down on probably under our grunge layer so let's just pull this right down uh, no do you know what we need we need a we need like some kind of grunginess on this as well so let's just add a procedural okay let's just preview that There you go, much better. Let's turn off that mask now, we don't need that on. Not bad at all, if I may say so myself. Okay, so just to finish, we will, we will do a light layer. 
but because my machine is slowing down a fair amount I'm going to turn all the layers off so there you go that's much better so what we need to do now is really just this these little bits here and if we make a new layer call it light glass okay and we'll make it black fill that should fill the hole whoops that's me not thinking again try again so it's black and of course the whole thing is going to be black but we can use our ID map view ID map on mesh select which ID mesh, mesh we want to use and as you can see now we've just got black here so we can do all the various things we need to do with this metallic roughness make it quite shiny actually let's make it shiny ish with a procedural let's preview that on the mesh that looks pretty good and <coughs> for the mask <coughs> What we're going to do is we'll make a mask <coughs> to use for our normal map, but not for the other the, the other aspects here. So for the time being, let's make a mask. Let's call this glass bump. preview that on the mesh and we're actually going to do a bump in so I need this mask to be white so if I paint it now it's just going to take on this color here so it's a bit weird that you have to use the same tool for the actual color as you do for the mask um, it's kind of a bit uh, deceiving because now I need if I did anything painting now I would have to um, change it again you know so <coughs> but there you go so anyway now my mask is white and I want to do some bumping so I don't need to preview it on the mesh oh sorry I don't need to preview the selected mask on the mesh I need to not have it so I can see what I'm going to paint and I need a an image, a brush texture, so okay so there we go so basically it's just very similar to what I did earlier but it's now just a set of rings now because our this this little bit where we're painting on is very small we've only got a 4k map here so we're talking our textures of minuscule really so I can't afford to have too much detail here I probably would have been better off having a separate UV like that filled this whole UV area just for this if I'm that bothered about uh, getting a lot of detail on here uh, which I should have thought about beforehand but there you go hindsight is a, a, a useful thing if you can utilize it before you need it <laughs> so there we go so that's probably about right make sure I've got everything set up now I'm going to raise this from so basically it's already a white mask now I'm going to raise the rings to leave me black make sure I'm p painting which I am and my paintbrush wants to be white which it is okay I think we can work with that let's just try so I come to my normal map and we'll just play with the settings here okay that would do
and that will do us. Let's just rename this glass rings mask. And now what we are using of course is this mask for everything here including metallic roughness. Uh, so this normal here I've got link to mask. I um, don't want to use a mask. I'm going to go texture and turn this mask off here so we're not actually using it but under my normal I'm actually going to pick that mask up here glass bump okay so let's just turn these off for a moment and I have done this before so I know oh, okay let's use use bump map pretty sure this is the, the key to this so that's and the opacity and there we go so I'm not actually using the mask I oh, beg your pardon I am got glass rings mask selected but so there we go so essentially I made the mask here but I'm not using it actually as a mask I'm just using this that particular texture as a in, in fact a bump here and uh, that has worked quite well so now I can turn these back on and there we go so there we've got our bump and we've got our textured light panel so a bit of faffing but uh, kind of came through in the end so let's turn everything back on and then we can call it a day for this particular icon item and then we can move on to the legs and so there is our final capsule main section all done and I'm quite pleased with how that looks so what I'm going to do now is just bake this whole section down and then we'll move on to do the legs so here we are having baked the textures down into one set of PBR textures and I have to say on the whole it looks pretty good it's only a 4k texture so you can't get too close and some of the detail breaks up as you do get a little bit close uh, there are some discrepancies which is probably my fault actually uh, in regards to the seams uh, but that's something that we could probably fix uh, on my maps uh, a little bit later anyway but so on the whole it looks uh, pretty darn good and I'm quite pleased with it um, also uh, just so uh, we can see the bevels on the actual objects so I didn't have them on whilst I was working with it but it's uh, it's just quite nice to have an extra set of bevels in fact let's try two segments and it just helps to curve the edge it gives, takes away that, that harsh edge you got and I'm only on one level of viewports subdivision as well so let's take that up a little bit and that still holds up quite well and that's got quite a nice look to it now so without further ado let's go on to the legs <coughs> and I'm ready to go in texture paint before I do add any more layers any layers to this we will just once again change the base color to look more metallic so let's should give it a metallic of one take the roughness down a little bit make it nice and shiny and we've got the same going on here with the bevel uh, I've basically turned it off for the time being and in fact let's take our subdivision levels down nah, let's not okay so our first level uh, is going to be a metallic texture much like we did before just for the legs slightly different version more of a kind of black uh, metal ironish texture um, so let's start with that let's call this legs base and we'll start with base color before that we'll fill it 
and then we go to base color and we'll go to procedural again and start working on procedural colors to get them looking as we need them to So that will do for our colour, it's got a nice sort of black iron texture to it. So we'll just move down to the metallic now and do pretty much the same thing. Procedural, uh, we'll match the what we had, in fact I'll just copy, copy, the, copy that procedural to this one don't need these though yep I think that will do for metallic so let's now move down to roughness actually let's just copy this one now and let's preview this on the mesh as well I think that will do for roughness let's copy that and let's go to the normal procedural and paste Let's preview that on the mesh. Okay, and let's turn them all back on. And there we go, that's looking pretty good, pretty grungy. And so what we'll do now is we'll just take some of the edge where or, uh, away if you like where, where the edges of this particular layer uh, just to see the PBR texture behind it so let's go and make a new layer sorry I mean a new um, new mask and our first mask will use ambient occlusion cycles again over to cycles, preview it on the mesh and we'll use the inside AO, take the size right down that's pretty much what we want okay so we'll bake that one down okay so there's our mask and once again we need to invert it to see the edges so we can just swap the colors around until we get this sort of look just needs to be a fraction on there what we have lost we've lost the edges here so we've got nothing there kind of is there but it's just not enough for what we need it to be right, so what we'll do is we have to create another we have to do another version so let's leave this one like it is quite tight 
So we'll leave that one there for now and we'll see if we can do another one with the other option given to us which is the geometric mask. Once again cycles is needed and we have this curvature simple here which can work depending on how much geometry you've got and actually it can change depending on how many subdivision levels you've got here as well. So let's try that and let's squeeze the colours so you can see how rough it is here but just temporarily if I take the viewport levels up it gives me a lot more geometry and therefore the mask gets tighter doesn't like it though okay I'm going to leave that mid mid uh, bake if you like and just go back to the layout mode tap into edit mode and I haven't got a lot of geometry here you see so what I'm going to do actually I'm just going to spend a little bit of time because I think it just for the sake of um, making geometry, some extra geometry here I'll get a better look for my, for my mask I won't have to work so hard later on uh, so I'm just going to turn subdivision off There you go, that's much better. So just adding some geometry to my um, my polygons there, it's given me a much nicer, cleaner mask and I don't have to do anything to that now except bake it out, which is what I'm going to do. And that is, a, is an actual better, that's better for us than the mask we had previously made. So just bake that. And here's the mask it's given us uh, before I do anything else. Just going to drop this back down to actually just the one I think would be fine. And it's the mask it bakes out is never quite as nice as you'd hope it, it was going to be. Uh, but having said that, it still uh, more gives us more than enough to work with for our edge mask. In fact, if we combine these two together, we may even get something even better. Okay, good. Took me a little while to get there, uh, but I'm quite pleased with that. So, uh, what we need to do now is just add some um, noise to this to break it up, this uniformity, and then we're done. So, but before I do that, well, actually, I can just add it to this mesh here. So, let's go preview mask, mask stuck on mesh, add a procedural, OK, and we'll probably be able to let's just preview that on the mesh.
and that's not bad I think I can live with that it's possibly a bit too much think that's going to serve our purposes just fine that looks pretty good so I'll leave those masks there we're going to bake the whole thing down anyway if I need to come back and play with those I can okay so the next layer we need to do is uh, we're going to make the feet a similar color to the actual main base unit so we'll add a layer fill it, Let's make the primary colour, let actually do a procedural much like we did before, and just so that we're not getting confused by anything, let's just turn the, the legs base off, and let's put <coughs> tonic off, roughness We'll just leave that like that for now. That should be sufficient just so we can see what we're doing with the colour. And let's make it a nice dark red with a standard reddish colour. so that's the color done so we'll just copy that procedural setup here to the rest of the channels here so just bear with me while I do that so here it is now on the roughness channel and it's the same principle apart from we just kept it very um, very uh, like a, so it's hardly rough at all uh, so we, I don't want too much uh, shininess on this. In fact, if anything, that's probably still a bit too. I want some discrepancy, but not too much. Let's try that. Try that. Okay, I think that will do. And then, of course, for the normal, we link to mask. And uh, we haven't got a mask at the moment, so uh, we'll come back to that once we have got a mask. Uh, we can actually use the mask that we made for the actual legs oh, but before we do that as you can see uh, we're affecting the whole of the legs at the moment so we go back down to our ID map and let's view the ID map on the mesh and actually pick that colour which is what we've got hide that and there we go, we'll be seeing just the end of the leg, the foot. So now we need to create a mask for it. We'll add a new mask and we'll make this a image texture and we'll use the feet one we used earlier, the master legs edgeware mask. I think we can start with this one because there's no point in inventing reinventing the wheel as they say and you can see that we're getting just that edge there which is quite nice uh, and we just probably just need to add a bit of a chipped look to it which we'll do by adding a procedural of course We'll preview those masks on the mesh. Actually, I'm just going to select that particular mask. Uh, 
and that's pretty good. We kind of need the opposite of what we've got with that. So let's just go back to preview our mask. More white and less black. There we go, and we're getting this real kind of chipped look to the feet, which is uh, which looks great. I think I'm quite pleased with that. The, the link to mask is on, so we're getting this kind of edge to it. Um, we could probably do with some more kind of bumpiness over the whole lot, I think, uh, but uh, that might be difficult to achieve with the normal link to mask, but we'll see. Quite like that. The uh, roughness is not rough enough, so going to preview this again. There we go, I just changed the colours a little bit and the roughness and I think the combination works quite well. Let's just take the normal link to mask strength down a little bit. So we're not getting quite so much depth. Maybe a bit more. Okay, good. And there's our feet done. So the last thing we need to do is just create a grunge map, just like we did for the actual body. And we're going to do this exactly the same process for that, uh, using a uh, PBR uh, ready-made rust texture, just to save me a bit of time. So let's add a new layer. Let's call this grunge rust for legs. OK. Let's load those particular image maps let's fill that layer that looks, that looks pretty good again let's just make it a little bit uh, smaller more detailed by changing the UV coordinates a little bit to the scale and now let's create a mask so that this is really just going to fall in the crevices so add new mask we're going to use a preset like we did before the grunge we need to go to cycles for this let's preview that on the mesh preview mask stack on mesh and that looks pretty good never really need to do much to this particular mask so let's just bake that let's call this legs grunge map 4k ok and now we've got that we can look to tighten the colours a bit, make them a bit brighter that, that will do and let's look at that in its full glory so to speak and that looks quite nice I like that, I like that a lot and for the sake of making more work I'm actually going to do a tighter grunge map so we sort of for the kind of bits in between uh, so just for this rust I'm actually going to go back to that mask and just broaden it a little bit more so it's reaching out a bit further and then we'll add a new mask uh, sorry a new layer one more layer and we'll just call this grunge dark go ok we're going to make this black across the whole lot so that's good 
and we'll just add a new mask and we're going to go ambient occlusion okay we need to go to cycles for this preview the mask on the mesh Bake that one down. Just pure AO. And there's our baked mask, which is much more in keeping with what I had hoped I'd get. Uh, but we need to break it up with a procedural. Let's just amplify the mask a little bit, mask multiply. And we're just getting these dark spots, it's not quite as dark as I'd like it to be. So let's just go back to the mask here. That will do us. I'm going to have to take the rust down a little bit, it's a bit, um, it's a bit overkill from what I want so let's just revisit the rust on the legs let's squeeze that mask a little bit more there we go and I like that I think we're going to I'm going to call it a day there so that all that now is necessary for me is to bake the relevant layers down into one PBR texture and I'll do that now and then I'll come back and uh, we'll see what it looks like. So here we are with the final uh, two unified um, objects, the base and the top now having had their textures baked into one set of PBR textures each. Where are we? Find one and so I've just brought them in and they look pretty good on the whole <coughs> I think I've done a <coughs> excuse me a fairly good job and I've just put um, screen space reflections and ambient occlusion on in EV as well just to make it look a little bit better and uh, on the whole it's done a pretty good job uh, let's just have a quick look and see what it looks like in cycles always looks better in cycles let's um, make the shadow catcher there we go and I think on the whole that's done a pretty good job and I'm quite pleased with that so thanks for bearing with me and f <coughs> if you followed al along in the last couple of hours then well done you uh, but I hope you have ha found something of interest within this video that possibly will inspire you to go ahead and create using PBR Painter for Blender. So thanks again, take care and God bless.